Hey, and welcome to Tales from the Dark Side. Hey, I know what you're expecting. You're expecting the little droid rollout thing that we normally have. You're like, what's going on right here? I just have to explain this really quickly. We are going to do the reviews, but we're getting a lot of new viewers. And I have to thank a lot of the Dark Side Quick. A lot of you guys are getting the word out there. We really do appreciate it. But know this for the new viewers. They already do. You'll find it out. We spoil stuff. We really do. We don't want to spoil this for you. So this is what I'm going to ask you to do. If you're new here and you don't want spoilers, please, please, please go down. Hit the like button because I told you there's going to be spoilers here. Then make sure you hit the subscribe, hit the bell. Go read the book. When you feel comfortable, come back and we're going to spoil it. Listen, we don't just give you the whole book, but we are going to show you panels. We are going to go over color covers. We are going to do a little bit of theory crafting and it might not be good if you sit here the whole time. For all the other people, make sure you give us a thumbs up too. We really do appreciate you guys and everything you've done for us here on, on the Dark Side crew. I'm going to go step out. Grab a buddy real quickly. Oh, but before I go, the Instagram account. I really appreciate you guys sending messages out there. I try to get back to them as quickly as possible. All the people that are sending me the little, like, my head cut off, put on top of a, a certain Jedi, or in a hand while somebody's blasting first, I love them. If they're good enough, I put them up there for you, and I'll give you credit. Please keep sending those. They're really fun. I do like to laugh at myself. I understand. It's all in fun. Um, but I'm going to grab my buddy real quickly, my co-pilot, and I'll be back. Welcome to Tales from the Dark Side. Short. Ah, Solo Wookie it is. What's going on, Solo Wookie? Oh, not much. Glad it, to be over the holidays. Right? It's been a heck of a week. Um, obviously, I've read the novel already. I was pretty early on to it. The first day I sat down, kicked through the majority of it, got the second one. We're going to try not to spoil on the, the novel stuff. I'm going to give everybody a couple more weeks to get through that, and then we'll do a little review on that. This one is strictly based on the High Republic Marvel number one comic. We're going to go over some of the co covers. We're going to go over some of the inside. We're going to talk about some of the characters, and then we'll probably give it a ranking system. What type of ranking system do you think we should give it, Solo? Well, I think it's only fitting since we used uh, helmets for Mando that we use lightsabers for the High Republic. Ah, oh, I think that'll be a good idea. We can use high lightsabers. Listen, I know people like Patrick are waiting for me. That He's got a counter. He's got a ticker. He's like, oh, I'm going to get Marco. He's going to screw up all these names. So we're going to start off describing the first cover, giving a couple of names out there real quickly. We're going to have Solo Loki lead this one off. Solo, explain the cover, who's on it, what we got. All right, this is cover A. I like it. It's a good one. It's from uh, Noto, N-O-T-O. And right here in the middle, we have Kiwi Trinus. Um, seems to be a pretty key character so far. Um, on her left, we have Skier, the Tradoshian, who may lose arms and grow them back. You will also notice that he is the same race as Bosk, the bounty hunter that we originally see from Empire, Empire Strikes Back. Uh, and then to the far right, we have Avar Chris, and her hilt is very Highlander, you know, stone, you know, old age swords and sorceresses and uh it's really cool i'm really intrigued with her uh with the hilt of her lightsaber yeah and in the middle we you know we've got the little starlight um station there which is really cool i will do cover b now that he's done such a good job at that so that everybody can give me a hard time about it i will tell you this kiwi and skier have a big part in this book and probably are going to have a big part in the arc i hope it stays to the original thing of doing a mini i think they're gonna do now they said they're not doing a mini anymore but i hope they arc it out at like six with that being said you can see skiers missing his arm now he was not missing his arm in the novel that's as far as i'm gonna go with that at least the majority of the novel he um he can grow it back like wookie said but in this the b cover that we see here this is done by indito the b cover's got a lot of interesting things on it the twins if you all remember from the original uh, concept art, these weren't the original quote unquote twins that were going to be in this series. These twins we know work on one brain. So you know how that's going to turn out. Spoiler alert. You know, they're going to kill one because then the other one can't. Uh, maybe they won't. I'm just joking with that. We don't know if they're going to kill them or not, but their names are uh, Surrette and Turek. 
spelled C-E-R-E-T and T-E-R-E-C. I will tell you this, that's off the promo stuff. And they have changed a lot of stuff from the promo stuff. And we'll get into some of the more of that e- later. So I'm not quite sure that's exactly how their name's going to be. So if I got their names wrong, that's fine. Because maybe that isn't their names. If I mispronounced them, yeah, Patrick's going to tell us that I mispronounced them. But either way, <laughs> next is in the middle. You see the uh, the creature that is known as the Drenger. Now, the Drenger, we do know because of the solicitations, is going to show up a lot in this series dealing with at least, if not anybody else, uh, Kiwi and probably Skier. You know, they're a master in Padawan, so they're probably going to be doing it, to, you know, in a lot of this together. We do know later on for sure that's who the main antagonist is, but does not show up in this book either. Um, the next one, you guys know I was high on this, the Hans. Uh, they released the art to this really late. I will say this. The late art that they released stayed true to publication. The early art that they released, besides the A cover didn't stay so true to publication and actually like the one in 10, but we'll get into it later. So this I is think, the hot. I think what? this is going to be a big cover too. This is a gorgeous cover with oh, I love Yoda it. and with Chris. Um, Avar Chris on there. And she looks like the elven princess from Lord of the Rings almost with her flowing cape and hair. Just a really solid, great cover. Yeah. I mean, if you could get this cover for, if you FOC'd it, you're paying like one set one dollar seventy somewhere on that. You know what I mean? Or if you got it at this, if you're lucky enough to get it at a comic book store and pay cover for it, $3.99, I think it's good. I just like this cover. This was my favorite cover out of the A, B, and C covers. Um, I it's as good as it looks in person as it does on the computer, probably better, obviously. Uh speaking of one that looked pretty good in person, but we've seen it so much that I wasn't that impressed. I still had it, I still got a couple copies of it though is the one in 10. It's the nil cover. Now, listen, I'm not sure these aren't generic nils. The one on the right, if I was betting on it, may be an important nil. They have not gotten into the nils yet in the comics, sort of. We'll get into that too. Uh, but it's it's a good cover. It's cool. I mean, the characters look cool. When it came out, it looks good. It's But the cover that really impressed me is the cover that least impressed me when the FOC was up. That's the no. one in 20. Go ahead. Now, real quick, is that not a Death Mirror kind of space pirate and then a Twi'lek space pirate on the so right? So, if that's a Twi'lek on the right, that may be very important. I'm just going to say that. I'm not going to spoil okay. anything else, okay. but that may be very important if that's a Twi'lek on Twilight. I like Twi'lek it. On the right. Okay. Uh, the But the one of the best covers right next to C that I really liked, and I did not originally because the art did change, not a ton, but just enough, was the one in 25 sway. I Listen, I got to thank McClay for this. I picked up a couple of these under ratio. Man, uh, what he saw in the original solicitation, I had zero plans to buy this. And he loved the cover in the solicitation so much that I was like, you know, hey, I, I've said a hundred times, I don't always have to be right. There's tons of Star Wars fans, but how much he liked it. I was like, okay, I'll grab a couple. And I'm glad I did just because of the way it turned out. The way this cover came out is beautiful, man. It, it's yeah. it's by far, if not the best cover out of them, the second best cover out of them. Well, and her lightsaber is just brighter than any lightsaber on a cover I've ever seen. The glow remember, on her saber is amazing. Do you remember the 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 solicitation for it? It was like a little like too highlightery and a little bit too wobbly. And they've obviously colored it in now where it's not just that bright highlighter neon green where it actually does look like it's vibrating, which is cool. It really, God, it's so good. And this part has to do with something in the book, which is amazing. Like it's, it's really cool. I, Hey, I'm big enough man to admit it. When I was wrong, I was wrong. I did not like it. Well, with that being said, I was wrong about the 125, except for the fact that McClay did tell me to get it up. And this isn't exactly the cover that they showed us it was going to be, right? <laughs> uh, so, hey, great cover. I love all these covers. All of them were great. I think I'm a little fatigued with the 1 in 10 because we saw it so much and the uh, the A cover. But look, you you know I'm a fan of the, the Hans cover, but I like Hans's art anyway. So, so she's good. Stephanie's good. Uh, I will do. I will tell you this. This technically didn't come out this week. It's probably going to come out in a month. A lot of people, it was passed over because it was really quick. There's like a one-week ordering period. 
There is a second print cover already, and it looks like this is what they're hopefully going to stay with. Like I said, they're changing a lot of stuff after solicitation, but it, this is what the cover is supposed to look like. This is right out of the solicitation. This is also the splash page for the end. We will get into this page. This is one of the pages that we have pulled to describe what's going on in this page. We'll get into it. But let's start off at the beginning. They're doing something real cool here, man. Now, this right here is something that I'm so happy that they're doing. I don't know about you, Solo Wookie, but every time I read the novels, it gets longer and longer. It's almost about three intro pages. They do a timeline breaking down where each book stands, each book coming up stands, where the movies are, everything else. I really like that they added this in there to help not only our regular deep divers, but even our surface dwellers of fandom right into this timeline. I mean, I lose my place in the timeline all the time. So to have this, just a genius idea. It is. It's great. And they kept it streamlined, which is really nice because I've heard all types of stuff, even at the store. You know, I spent an hour and a half there. I waited at my store till they had sold out of all the variant covers, which took a little bit over an hour and a half till they had done that. They still had like A, B, and C. They probably still had, you know, a couple more. They had a couple hundred covers left. But look, hearing what people thought this timeline was and what they thought was going on, I'm glad this came out because it helps people out understand the timeline a little better. Hey, listen, one of the reasons I'm great at Timeline, I read the novels and they haven't broken down there all the time. So it feeds into your head. It gets you that review all the time. So you know what's going on. This is a really awesome way to do it. I just hope they don't get it too cluttered, right? I hope they kind of keep it like this every single time so you know where it is. I hope when they start doing some of the smaller ones, they do like they did to the left where it says Fall of the Jedi and they have like the movies and stuff out there. I don't want it getting like the novels where it's great for the novels, but I just hope they don't do that, that in the comics. I so agree. If they get too much clutter in there, it'll mess things up and make it worse. As long as they keep it simple, keep it clean, I think we're on the right track with this. So it starts off just like the preview pages. If you've been watching Tales from the Dark Side, if you've been watching MCM, pretty much anything we get on, I've been showing these preview pages for a little bit. I have to tell you, man, like Kiwi and Skier, this the art is great, right? Like I know people were saying the little imp things here might have annoyed them a little bit. Uh, I don't care. The art is so good. The writing is what it is. Um, but I was just impressed. I was taken aback. I went through a couple pages and I was like, oh man, I have to go back and look those eyes over there. I think they put all the impressions on there. Yeah, sure. They're trying to do a little bit of funniness. You have to remember that this is the generalized Star Wars book. This is the for everybody Star Wars book. Uh, so do probably take it like that. But just the action, the impact, the way the lightsabers glow on the page. We didn't see any hands blow up. I mean, it's great, dude. I thought the art was very good throughout this entire book. I really like the art. It's very. It looks clean, like a really, really well done tattoo or like a sticker. It, it just the way that the sabers glow, just like you said, the details and all the little line work. It's just very, very impressive. I will say to start out, the word bubbles were a little cluttered, and in some other portions they do get a little off and cluttered. My only critique of it. However, the action scenes are really good in this book. Also, one other thing that I like, they kind of stuck, and I know I'm bringing up the novels in the show. And in the novels, they did kind of the Game of Thrones thing. If you ever read those novels, how they do point of views from certain groups or certain people. They did this a little bit in the, the book too. We come over here, they start introducing other Jedis to us. Of course, on the Starlight Beacon, you've got Chris. She's there. Um, I'm trying not to spoil the novel, so I'm not going to get into it as far as that. And then Murr is the uh, other guy here who you see. He seems to be a part of the group with Skier and Kiwi. Do know that's a running theme. I'll give that away. It is a running theme how they've been doing groups of people. Usually between five and three of the Jedis are hanging out a lot or any other type of group that they bring in throughout both of the books that they've already released and these... Um, and the comics. Um, obviously, he's looking for her. I'm not going to spoil who at the soup. These the Jedi's are a lot of the Jedi's here are demonstrating different types of powers uh, throughout both the comic and the novel because it's very detailed in the novel. I won't get into it. I will tell you this: that Chris's superpower, as I like to call it, is very similar to Mars, and I hope this guy's name is Mars. I hope they're not killing me and I got the wrong name of the guy. But either way, um, it's really close to that um, and real cool. 
Also, they did a, they 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 start doing a little promo. They start showing you a couple other people in this little portion, little breakdown. Uh, we get two people. We get Feather and which is the hairy guy with the beardish type thing. You see him there in a couple things. He's like a grandmaster. He's on the council, and then you get a young, very spry Yoda. He's got his work pants on. He's got his thumb hanging off his belt. He's ready to go uh, go dig some ditches or. Just do some general work, you know? I mean, that's what I look like when I go outside and I'm fixing the uh, the seawall. So anyways, we got Yoda there. They talk about how he should be on the council, but he isn't because he is. And they pretty much promo the IDW series about how he's really just out there helping the younglings. We do know that that's where he's going to spend most of his time. I think this is just like a show off so people can be comfortable with characters that they already know because they just introduced four characters in five or six pages and you didn't know and nobody knew any of them unless you're reading the promo material and uh, I think that they're also trying to establish a little bit more an emphasis on that timeline as, as far as age with yoda and get you kind of comfortable with that where we're at yeah that's a very good point very very good point they then switch back you know i said section sections she's going through the rest of their training we're not going to spoil the whole part you can watch it plus it's a lot of those reedy reedy things you know, words, and these are picture books, buddy. Uh, <laughs> so there's some great pictures in there. I will say this about Skier. I am thinking that, like, he always looks angry, and I'm not sure if you don't look at his face and you just take the tone of what he says, I'm not sure it's quite anger. And it, they kind of address it on this page, and that's why I did that. Like, the the little um, buggish imp things like, oh, you're in trouble or whatever, and she's like, eh, maybe I am, maybe I aren't, uh, maybe I'm not. Um, and she can't even read them. So I think they kind of lay that down here early in the book and that will come into play later on in the book. They then do the combo thing where they bring the two storylines together and you have a also looks like angry Chris here, but she's not. She cuts off the little Padawan pony tail and look at you. You're going to be a knight. Yay. Uh, so I guess he wasn't mad because he was taking her to be a knight. Then they give us they give us this little page where they just do these triangle sections. We're gonna get back to this page. Pretty important page here. Maybe we'll see if it's important or not. And then we get the final page, which becomes the cover to the second print. And she's there crying. This is not the end, folks. There's a couple more pages after this. And this we're gonna hit up to in a little bit. Um, but then you get this scene. So through this all, the green squares is her is Kiwi talking in her head. I found that that wasn't my favorite part. Like, it seems like she's very insecure throughout the whole book. And to be somebody who's going to be a Jedi Knight, I know there should be a little bit of doubt normally, but that's usually they try to get fear and doubt out of you before you become a Jedi Knight. Don't bring up Attican. I know the exceptions. I'm just saying that, <laughs> I'm just saying that, like, you know, she does seem to be. A, Maybe she shouldn't be a Jedi Knight. You know, she seems very insecure. She's always worried about what her master thinks of her. I do hate that a lot of books and a lot of storylines definitely make the Padwans and the learners, the younger understudies, always seem to be insecure. They always seem to not be reassured of how powerful they are or are not. It it really gets kind of played out and and i i agree with you 100 percent. i would like to see a very strong character that wasn't egotistical that was um very assured of themselves and their powers and their place in the storyline without having to seem uh over pleasing and you know undersold the good thing about this is there's a lot of new characters wink wink nod nod in different storylines that hopefully we get to see so i think there's a little bit of flavor for everybody i will show you now pretty much a glimpse of some of the end pages you get this right here now i have not searched the internet i have not done anything since reading this but skier here is doing a little crash and a no there is some background talk about how she's how uh kiwi saying like oh i'll take care of everybody and you see the no now i do not know if this is like a flashback or a force mind thing once again like i was saying i think they show his face to look like he's always angry and upset you can even go back to this they call that resting trandoshan face 
yeah, you could go back to where she's getting initiated. And for some reason, I think they're playing up to it a lot where he looks angry, but I don't think he's really that angry. I think he's actually pretty proud of her. Um, I will say this, something else that I really liked about this book. They gave us uh, at the end, they gave us two panels, two pa not panels. They gave us two pages. They were shrunk down, uh, but they gave us two pages from the new book sketched out. Hopefully they stay the same. That has been one consistency. If you see sketch pages for the books, they have showed up in the books. Not so much in the covers, but in the books. And here they are. This right here looks like a gas or smoke attack. I will spoil something right quick. The nil, a lot of times when they attack something, they use this, they use gas. That's like their main first step into attacking. I'm not going to get all into what they do. So as soon as I saw this, I was like, oh, cool. Nil is coming. I do not think anybody on this page is a nil. But then we get the second page, which is the High Republic 2. The art is st still by Andito, who I think did the art through all of one also. Either way, you see a nil. It looks like about to jump in. It does look like our man Skier has got, or Skier, sorry, haven't been pr pressing the S's. Patrick, there you go. See, Skier, two S's. Uh, <laughs> he, 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 I love that he does that too, by the way. He, uh, you see that the, the nil is, it looks like a nil is about to jump down and try to attack him. I hope, because it looks like he's only got one arm here. I hope that it's kind of like a flashback. I really do. I hope that they really do focus here early on on the Dranger and they don't try to have both enemies come at them at the same time. I hope we hear how he does. You know, I I just, I'm not going to say anything else. That's what I hope. I, I hope that. Now, that covers the book. But what it doesn't cover is those couple pages we told you we'd get back to. So what I did, I don't know. A lot of people have been seeing this. It's been floating around. I chopped it up a little bit. I did a little bit of my artwork to it. And did it and try to figure out, hey, are any of these people here? Are any of these people here? Uh, some of these people here, here, or here. So we will start off here with the easiest one. We definitely saw two of the people on the Jedi Council. Oh, by the way, look, Oppo's in there. Ah, interesting, huh? Where is Jedi then? Where is Jedi? Anyways, uh, Yoda and Vatar both did show up now. Uh, Vitar might be the grandmaster that sticks around a little bit more and Yoda would presumably, he might be in both books. I don't think we're going to see him a ton of this book because I know they're going to use him a lot in the IDW stuff. Um, those are those two for sure. We know they're their uh, first appearance of Vitar. I think is easily to explain. That was in that book. We definitely saw him. He was addressed. He was in two panels, whatever. I'm not trying to say it's a first appearance. I'm just trying to say he's in this book. First time we ever saw him. Oh, nice. Okay. Next, easiest thing to explain. These people cover. Yes, for Turek and Suret. Hey, hopefully that's how you pronounce it. Hopefully they change the name and then I get a second chance at it. <laughs> uh, we also get Maru and did I say it? I think I got it right. Maru. Oh, excellent. Good memory. And then we've got, of course, the two key players here. Skier and Kavi. Hey. Kivi. Kivi. Yeah, those two I really do think, so the blue box is people that we know were in the inside, right? The greener box was all the people that have been seen on one of these covers or within certain things. And this green box also indicates major players that I think are going to be in multiple of these issues. I would be surprised if we did not see the twins by at least the third solicitation. I think they're going to be in the second solicitation or the second book. But if by the third, just because of what the previews of what the third was, I'd be surprised if they weren't in there. But once again, that cover B has them. So if you really are into just seeing them for the first time, that would be it. Now let's get into a little bit more of the complicated portions of it. This is a little bit more complicated here. We got a ton of circles. Probably should have figured out that I should have made the colors of the circles a little different, but I didn't. It is what it is. Not the best of things. All right. So in the last six minutes, I'm going to cover this and we're going to grade it. Here we go. Chris. Uh, she definitely is there. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So let's go back to this picture. Chris, we got Chris. She's there. We've got her picture. Uh, also in this, in the second pie panel, we see a Wookiee. I'm going to go with his nickname as Burr. Uh, yeah. Burr, Burr Yaga? Burr Yaga. Burr Okay. We're going to go with Burr. He does show up in the novels. Pretty interesting character. I do think that most likely... 
that is the character too that is in here in the audience. Also, if you look at the hammerhead species, we do have a hammerhead that shows up in the kids' book. Uh, Sutman, Sutman, whatever. I screw that up. Ding that one. Give it to me. I'll take that one on the chin. Um, I'm not quite sure that those two are going to show up. I'm not sure that those two are going to show up a ton in this book, but I'm pretty sure that they might show up every once in a while, uh, just ex especially Burr. Um, in the page, it's going to be the cover. The purple lightsaber person, I think that that person turns out to be man. Uh, man has a very special relationship with Chris. I'd be highly surprised if he doesn't show up in every book she shows up in, if not most of the books and storylines that she shows up in. In the novel, he in the novel he is grouped in there. Burr also has a lot of interaction with Chris in the novel. So, like I said, I would be surprised if those two don't show up. Gilios uh, is also somebody who they changed around his looks from what he originally looked like. Uh, to what he looks like now also has a little bit of a he's a little interesting of a character we won't get into him he definitely if that's not him right behind skier i don't know who it is i will note this real quickly uh over here three of my top favorite characters so when i was saying that these were in groups one group is chris man and then uh still how do you say his name stellan kind of switch in and out with each other. Uh, but it's mainly man and Chris are together. Um, another portion of that group that stays a lot together is somebody by the name of Loden great storm bell. Zetterfar, Zetterfar maybe. And storks. Oh, also a uh, Porter. Those four are a group. I will get into that in a different video or on a different uh, show, but that is my favorite group right there. They do travel with, it's not a pet. I'm not going to explain why it's not a pet, but they travel with something. In the preview looks, it looks like a dog. We pretty much think that the final picture of it is going to be, if you look in the third panel down, the red thing with a tail is probably what it finally is going to turn out to look like. And if that's the case, the lady in the black may actually be – it can't because she's got the white hair. It really can't. I don't know who that is. It, Whatever. I'm just saying that that dragon-type animal does look and is described in the novel to be their force animal that is not a pet because you can't have pets if you're a Jedi. So not a pet but force animal – Read the book, man. It's really cool what they did there. I really liked it. All right. Listen, we've got a minute left. We're probably over time. No, we got two minutes left. Wookie, here we go. We're doing lightsabers, right? <laughs> That's right. So what are what are do you want me to go first or do you want to go first? Oh, I'll hit it up. All right. Um, I'm really excited uh to see where this goes and how much they actually do and don't do. Uh, I think it's got some incredibly great art, which I think that we've been hit or miss lately on a lot of the books. I hope that this continues with the uh, incredible stuff that it already has. I I got to go for a first book. I'm, I'm going to have to go with a three. That's a good grade. Now, listen, this is that's that's a really solid grade because that's pretty much what you always grade stuff. All right. Hey, uh, <laughs> this is what I'm going to say. I'm going to say as far as cover, look, uh, the novel was supposed to be read first. I read it first it might have deterred a little bit from the shock and awe of the comics. I am very happy with the novels. The kids won too. I am also pretty happy with the comics. Look, I, I, I did think that there was a little bit, they were trying to introduce a ton. So I think some of the pages got a little bit too wordy. They are picture books in the end. Um, however, I cannot criticize like how the covers came out, man. I mean, just, the only one, the one in 10 was a little duller, but everything else came out. They are doing the intro timeline. That's so cool. The inside art, just the eyes, the lightsabers, the action, just amazing. Um, the story, this isn't quite a Marco story, right? Like this. Well, there's a lot of background. They're trying to fit a lot of information in one book. I think they, they, they could have they spread it out a little bit longer and been just fine. 
I will give because considering I read the novels and I already have my favorite team because that's what I feel this is going to be is a bunch of teams. I already have my favorite team. And since they didn't show up, I was a tad bit disappointed with that being said, man, it's a good, it, it's good. Like it has potential. If they, if they keep this in, if they keep this in an arc, if they keep it in, we're following these two groups and they arc it to the six, like I think they are and what they originally planned to do and then move on to two more groups and then have them intermingling, And then it's going to be between four different groups are going to interact kind of like they did in the novels. Um, yeah, bro, I'm all in. Uh, even if they just develop these stories a little bit better here, I'm still all in. I, look, I'm all in either way. But what I'm saying is I'm going to give it probably three and a half. A little bit too wordy. The art by itself. Wait, are we giving four or five? Five? So I'm going to give it a four. I'm taking that back. I'm giving it a four. The art alone gets it a four. I mean, it really does. The art is just fabulous in this book. It's cool. And people are excited too, right? I know we're not supposed to factor that entire review, but people are really excited about this uh, book. I have also heard the complaints and that's fine. Star Wars is for everybody. Maybe not for those people. They're putting out enough stuff that I think there's gonna everybody's going to find something. This is something that I will be picking up on a regular basis. It's good. It's good. All right. Well, I appreciate it, everybody. That's our review. That was our short review. We will have longer reviews on the channel. We'll deep dive into this a little bit more. Um, go out there and check out wherever we're going to be at, probably on MCM, and then we'll do it on the dark side stuff too. We'll definitely do a short review on the novel, but like I said, I'll give everybody a couple of weeks on that. Solo Wookiee. What do you always tell everybody to do? Please, everybody, go down there and force push that like and subscribe button. And then go over and saber strike that bell so that you can be alarmed when the greatest chat and the greatest voices come to do all the Star Wars talk this side of the galaxy with you. Please remember, may the force be with you. Always. always.